President Marcos was finally gone. The Marcos family looks set to return with the people's backing. Controversy still dogs the Philippines election, but there's no doubting who will be the next president. The son of the former Philippines dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, has secured an unassailable landslide victory. The Philippines, amongst others, have overlapping territorial claims with China. Our sovereignty is sacred. We will not compromise it in any way. We are a sovereign nation. Chinese forces have frequently harassed the Philippine Coast Guard. We will not allow a single square millimeter of our maritime rights to be, to be trampled upon. The Philippines now finds itself on the front line against actions that undermine regional peace, erode regional stability, and threaten regional success. We will have every ASEAN leader here over the course of the next two days. It's very historic. President Marcos, welcome to 7.30. Thank you very much indeed. In your speech to the Australian Parliament, you use unusually strong language. Quoting your own pledge, you said, I will not allow any attempt by any foreign power to take even one inch mm. of our sovereign territory. We will not yield. Are you talking about not giving up Philippines territory in the South China Sea? Absolutely. Uh, it, uh, it, it, is, it is my sworn duty and the sworn duty of uh, the entire government of, of the Republic of the Philippines to defend uh, the Constitution of the Philippines. And uh, the first article of the, public, of the Constitution is the definition of our territorial waters. You didn't name China, either in your answer or in, mm. indeed in the speech that you gave to Australia, but it, it appears to be present um, in every security move that you make and indeed behind every speech that we've seen you make recently. How urgent a priority is it to counter the fast-growing military power of China? Well, it, it, we don't see it in those terms. We don't see it as countering the military power of any country whatsoever. It's merely the defense of our, of our territory. We have territorial conflicts with other countries, Malaysia, for example, and Vietnam. But we have come to an arrangement with them and that none of the, not the, 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 to, to, to resolve any such conflicts peacefully. So, I mean, I'm right in saying that you don't have that capacity to resolve conflict with China in the same way. Do you actually have direct contact with the Chinese? We, we have se at several levels. Um, at several levels. In fact, in, to, in, uh, the, in January of last year, when I went to, to Beijing, and I visited with uh, President Xi Jinping. That is what I proposed, a kind of hotline mm -hmm. between us, so that if there is a message that needed to be sent from one president to another, we can be assured that that message will reach them. Uh, and we have sort of established there, there, there are several, there are several uh, area, uh, points of contact. Uh, at the ministerial level, certainly, and the sub-ministerial level as well. But do you have a personal line to President Xi? Not yet, I'm afraid. Let me just ask you this question. I want to come to the, um, what it is that you want from Australia, because that's obviously one of the reasons for your visit and your speech, uh, as well as ASEAN. But um, the former president of the Philippines, Duterte, was making overtures to China, very strong ones. Have you decisively moved away from Chinese influence and back into America's orbit? Well, I think we, it's important to make it very, very clear. Whatever the Philippines does, the Philippines does because it is in our interest, not, it, not because it has been dictated upon us by anyone. You don't think that your language that you used when you took office and it, the same language that you used uh, in the Australian parliament uh, during your visit is a message to China about where, your int where you believe your interests lie? Well, as I explained it to President Xi again, I said it's my duty. I took an oath to defend the Philippines. And anyone who will help me in that regard, I must engage with them. Was your predecessor getting too close to China? Well, I think the situation between now and then is quite different. Um, and I'm sure he did what, he, you know, what was in his judgment was uh, uh, the best. He did hew a little closer to China rather than the United States. But, and maybe, 
because things have uh, heated up a little bit. But we have a, we have a, we have a, together with Australia, we have a visiting forces agreement with the United States and Australia. These are the only two countries that we have them with. And we have a mutual defense treaty with the United States, which has been uh, there for decades. How important is it from your point of view that Australia has chosen to acquire and build a fleet of nuclear powered submarines? Well, I, that that decision is uh, is an Australian one. Do you support it? I support AUKUS. I support uh, the Quad, and, and I, I think that uh, uh, this just represents a, a a stronger front in terms of maintaining the peace, uh, the, the maintaining the peace for in in the South China Sea. It is a response, really, to uh, to a. a, a, a um, a differing situation, a more dangerous, more risky situation than why we had it, before. Why is it more dangerous? Just explain. Because the, the, the potential for, for outright conflict is much higher now than it was before. And it, uh, we worry in the Philippines because it could come from not, not a strategic decision by anyone saying, OK, we're going to war. But just by making some some servicemen making a mistake, or some action that's misunderstood, and that's that's why the 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 the, the, the ongoing attempt is always to try and you know lower the temperature, uh, ease down ease ease up on the rhetoric, and and communicate and just continue to communicate. That's why you need the phone, the same phone that Khrushchev and Kennedy had, right? <laughs> that's right. Yes. Well, let me let me try and understand what you what you what you might want what you might want from Australia. Would you expect it, the Australian Navy to come to the defence of Philippines forces in the event of conflicts with China over disputed territory in the South China Sea? Well, I suppose if we are in a uh, we we are in a joint exercise or in a joint uh, uh, operation, uh, then perhaps the, that that would involve Aus uh, Australia in that. But we do not have any formal no. uh, agreement or treaty um, in that regard, um, as we do with the United States. How would you explain to Australians, to Aus Australian servicemen or women, why they should potentially risk their lives? in the aid of Philippines under pressure from China. Why do we belong there? Well, let me take, take us back to the Second World War, uh, where the uh, defense of uh, uh, Corregidor and Bataan, which, was the, uh, which were the, the outposts uh, that held, held out longest. But because of that, it delayed the invasion of Australia to the point that um, the Japanese never invaded Australia. And that if we can if we can stop it at an early stage nip it at the bud as it were then the, then the, there's no need to for it to 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 uh, to grow into other areas other regions and hopefully if we can at, at best as i said uh, keep the peace in uh, in the south china sea that's that 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 will that will be a great advantage to Australia because of the, the, the peace is maintained. In relation to the former president, um, mm. it, it's clear from the outside that there's been some breakdown in the relationship. I mean, do you intend now to invite the ICC to the Philippines to conduct its investigation more fully into former President Duterte's murderous war on drugs? No, that would be a political move. And what we are uh, we, we, will, we do not play politics with jurisdiction and sovereignty. And the, the, position, the position that we've taken is that we do not recognize the jurisdiction of the ICC. And we view it as a threat to sovereignty, simply because the ICC is, uh, was formed uh, to conduct, uh, to, to provide justice to areas where there is no, uh, there is no judiciary where there is no court system, where there is no police, where there is no peace and order. And that's not the Philippines. And therefore, uh, I don't think that their investigations or their actions apply to the Philippines. If it's not the ICC, then who provides justice for the many thousands? I think the number is something like twelve to 30,000 people who were killed in President, former President Duterte's well, I, war on drugs. I, I, How do I, they get justice? I think we can, we, we in the Philippines have, a, as I said, a functioning police force. Um, we have a, a 
functioning uh, judiciary and that uh, they they it is their responsibility to take care of that we have uh, we have made a great deal of progress in that regard where the many policemen have already been removed from service because they've been found to be liable their cases have been filed uh, many are already in jail do you uh, think it adds up to justice for those people who lost their lives well, what we try to do is to now go back to the families of those and, and see that perhaps um, uh, see what we can do to, to make things right for them. Uh, as, long, as long as it can be shown, of course, that they were not actually involved in the drug trade. Um, uh, as I said very early on, we, we're not interested in you know, uh, uh, a small time uh, Addict, for example, you know the addict. You take them to the hospital. You take them to rehab. You uh, don't shoot them. We don't. We what we we said. Uh, we've taken enforcement as far as we can, mm. and it only gets you so far. Your father was overthrown by a people's revolution, and you are his only son. How do you resist the impulse to authoritarianism? I have no impulses to authoritarianism whatsoever. Um, I, I, they, we we have a good system going. We are, uh, uh, I think, we've learned to. Uh, we have a constitution that we have uh, uh, that that we have uh, gone by for the last uh, 36 years now. We are making, hoping, hoping to make some changes to it, but. Uh, the, no, I, 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 I have not felt any tug or, 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 or uh, uh, temptation to, 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 to make it a more authoritarian system. You have a, you're a pol you've been a politician for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You have a, a very clear understanding of your country's history. And you obviously revere your father. I've seen you talk about him. Do you also understand the costs of his authoritarian rule to people in the Philippines? Well... Uh, it was a very different sort of authoritarian rule, I think. Uh, when people think of an authoritarian rule, uh, it was uh, uh, non-participatory. Uh, Whereas uh, I think uh, the version that uh, my father tried to promote and actually practiced was very much uh, still uh, with the participation of all stakeholders uh, that were involved. It was just a peace and order situation that, that, that really dictated uh, the necessity for, 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 the, for, the, for the declaration of martial law. Let me just, let me just understand, the um, make sure that we're talking about the same thing. I think Am Amnesty records that during that period, 70,000 people were imprisoned, 34,000 tortured, and 3,200 people killed are the numbers. Mm -hmm. And your father, in an interview, admitted that over 50,000 were detained. So I just want to ask you again, do you accept that there was a human cost oh, yes. to that rule? There always is. It was war. And uh, <laughs> the, 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 with, with war, the death and destruction is inevitable. But this is a war not declared by the government of the Philippines. This was declared a war, this war, these wars were declared on the government of the Philippines. And both of them were, uh, one was to, was, to, was to divide the country, and the other one was to uh, remove uh, the present uh, political system by um, armed struggle. There is one series of questions that, that um, comes up in relation to um, your, your father's time, which is, um, it, which is, of course, the question of corruption, which became mm -hmm. wholly associated with the Philippines for a long period of time. I think contemporary court judgments acknowledge the atrocities that were committed, but also the plunder of the country's resources. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want all of that money back in the hands of the Filipino people? Well, we... <laughs> the, 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 the narrative... I mean, may I just ask you why that's funny? Where that? Why that's funny. I'm asking you a question about the plundering of large sums of money no, from the I'm Filipino thinking, people. I'm thinking that that maintains, that that idea maintains, because it, uh, we, we, I, I take exception to many, many of the, of the uh, uh, assertions that have been made. And I think in, we have, been, we have, we have uh, since the cases were filed, the government fell. Cases were filed against me, my family, my, my, the estate, etc. And up to now, uh, we have found they, the assertions that were made, we have shown to be untrue. 
Quite a lot of money. I think five billion was already recovered. I, I guess the question is just this: mm, uh, th Do, you, again, do again. you not want to see all the money that was taken again, returned to the people? Again, uh, I, we have signed. This family has signed a quit claim. Quit signed many quit claims. Any money that you find is yours. And finish. And we, we, everything was taken from us. We went to. We, we were taken to Hawaii. Everything to our. Everything was taken from us. We had, nothing, we had nothing left. Not the view of the Presidential Commission. I'm sorry? Not the view of the Presidential Commission. This is my final question on this topic. The pres which Presidential Commission? In the Philippines. Their, oh, their view I is think, there's a I large think, amount of money I outstanding. Think that, that, that I think that having seen the facts, as, it have, uh, as, it has, as uh, they have been slowly revealed, uh, with further true investigation, not propaganda, but actual true investigation, like court cases and investigations by uh, all kinds of uh, NGOs, different agencies. Since that, that, does, that has changed. And people, uh, uh, people can see that it was propaganda. I suppose the question is, other countries in the region, including Australia, mm. want to know that the Philippines, and you in particular, as a Marcos, mm. have come to terms with your family's history. There, there was a time where the, the issue was Marcos. That's not the case anymore. Uh, if, and that's why I think the best proof of that is uh, my election. President Marcos, thank you very much indeed for speaking to 7.30. Thank you.